it has also affected the quality of life of a lot of South Africans. That is, of course, um, a number one on the priority list in terms of the issues that the president was indicating will be of priority uh, in terms of government's program of action um, in the year ahead. Um, the second issue, of course, is the issue of unemployment. We know that the issue of unemployment is a major burning issue in South Africa, particularly given the fact that um, we were already in a technical recession by 2018, and by the time COVID hit in, 20, um, um, in 2020, um, South Africa obviously was hardest hit with a lot of ordinary South Africans losing jobs, with a lot of companies closing down. So that is the second priority uh, in terms of government's program of action for the year ahead. And the third priority, it's poverty and the rising cost of living. Um, and then the last one is crime and corruption. Now, we had very interesting discussions earlier um, as we were unpacking all of the key issues, um, all of the key issues that South Africans feel that indeed, you know, um, they're expecting government, uh, the president, you know, to make announcements. And these announcements are, of course, expected to make a difference in the quality of life of South Africans. And we're talking about, um, you know, issues uh, around access to a comprehensive social protection for those who are unable to look after their families and who are unable to look after themselves. Um, but of course, as we know, um, if, if, as we are reflecting on all of these key issues, we will also be getting perspectives from Tembi Gorsi, who's outside, who is currently just getting uh, some reactions from members of parliament who are now just leaving the hall, the city hall, just to share with us. We've got Patricia Delil, whom uh, Tembi Gorsi will be talking to. Uh, Tembi Gorsi, we're crossing over to you. Welcome back. You have been watching Parliament TV and the president has spoken and i am now standing with the minister of public works miss patricia delil ma'am thank you for talking to us president has spoken you've listened what is your reaction well i can respond about my own department in terms of infrastructure we are making great progress with infrastructure the strategic infrastructure and the investment in that area and after the State of the Nation address, as you know, I will have my own press conference to unpack the progress that we make with infrastructure, including the, the, the rural bridges. Um, for me, what came through to the speech tonight is the emphasis on young people. That is the correct emphasis. And I think all departments must do more to get young people into the mainstream of the economy, whether it's through interns, apprenticeships, TVT colleges, because the biggest chunk of our employment is it's amongst our young people. In terms of the electricity crisis, um, we, all have, we are all in it together. And I think the emphasis on accountability when it comes to the electricity crisis by the president moving it into his office and the state of disaster will certainly help us to speed up all the regulatory reforms and all of that. And of course, with the help of the Auditor General that will be coming in as a preventative measure to prevent corruption during this state of disaster, it's to be welcome. Thank you very much. Mr. Lil, thank you very much for talking to us. That was the Minister of Public Works, Ms. Patricia Delil. And as indicated, we are standing in front of the Cape Town City Hall and we will be bringing you more reactions from the members of parliament that had been sitting and listening to the president outlining government's priorities for the year 2023. So for now, I'm taking you back to the studio. Indeed. So Tempe Kosi just had uh, some reactions from the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Patricia Dalil, who was basically just giving um, her reaction in terms of um, what she's taken uh, from the speech as per what uh, the president has announced. And she was specifically speaking to two issues, key issues. One is, of course, the progress that is being made within the infrastructure space. Um, committing there that uh, obviously there's going to be a process for her department to delve deeper um, um, into uh, the commitments that were made by the president and also formulate um, uh, you know, further plans, cascaded plans to ensure that all of the commitments that the president has made in relation to infrastructure 
are indeed being implemented. Another important uh, point that she raises is around um, uh, the issues that the, the president spoke to, which relate to youth unemployment. And she's encouraging all departments, um, and she's also um, encouraging all sectors of society, particularly the business, uh, business community, to also play their part in ensuring that you know, they address collectively the issue of youth unemployment. Crossing over um, immediately to Temping Kosi, who um, has lined up another interview to get some reaction from a member of the Good Party. Over to you, Temping Kosi. As indicated, I will be taking more reactions from the members of parliament. And standing with me now is Mr. Brad Heron. Mr. Heron, good evening, and thank you for taking this interview with parliament. Good evening, thank you. The president has spoken, you sat down, you listened. What did you make of, this, of, of tonight's address? Well, I mean, addressing the electricity crisis was unavoidable, so um, th there was no surprise that he addressed it. I think the positive aspects that came out of it was that he announced a plan in July last year and that we're sticking to that plan no matter how difficult it is. Um, and so there's not a, uh, an announcement of a new plan. We're staying the course. It's a difficult course, but we have to stay the course. I think the announcement of a state of disaster is an announcement for appearances. It gives the appearance of urgency, but there's nothing in the state of disaster legislation that cannot be achieved with the existing legislation that allows for access to additional funding and procurement um, processes that can be deviated from. So the state of disaster is really something for appearances. The idea of having a minister in the presidency focusing exclusively on the electricity crisis is probably a good one. We do, we do need the undivided attention of someone on that and to make sure that the national energy crisis program is being implemented. Um, I am a little disappointed that we did not go beyond just the extension of the social relief of distress grant um, and that the president didn't announce that there was going to be a massive overhaul of the social security system so that we would have a basic income guarantee or a basic income grant. And I think finally it is important to welcome the funding and the financing that will be provided for entrepreneurship. The greatest barrier to entrepreneurship is access to finance and without access to finance we will never develop um, a small business um, sector and entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship is critical to address unemployment. Mr. Heron, thank you very much for talking to us at Parliament TV. Thank you. That was Mr. Brett Heron of Good and I will now be joined about by Mr. Ngabayom Zingwankwa. Good evening, sir. You've sat down, you've listened to the president. What did you make of tonight's speech? Same old, same old. There's really nothing new in the speech. It's the old promises. It's about being able to provide water, being, being able to address the... putting plans in place to address the energy challenges of the country. But if you remember correctly, it started with that note as far back as 2015 and the situation doesn't seem to have improved. Instead, it has taken a turn for the worse. I mean, what even makes it unforgivable for me is that most of the people were complaining on our WhatsApp groups everywhere saying, it's sonar, but we don't have electricity. We can't watch it on TV. What's the point then of having sonar if half of South Africa is sitting in darkness and they can't even follow the messages that are taking place here? I think what also makes it worse for me is that at the time when, I think during the coronation of uh, Chief King Misizu, they were able to suspend load shedding, but you can't suspend load shedding for Sona. But the other issues for me is really, I mean, the Minister of Electricity to do what? When there's public enterprises, when there's energy, there's already a duplication of responsibilities and activities between those, uh, those ministries. And the President makes the worst thing by explaining what the ministry will not do, instead of explaining what the minister will do as if they still have to thumb suck and decide as to what the responsibilities of that person are going to be. But we also put the person in the presidency. So what do we want to do? Everyone, you put every entity and everyone in the presidency to the point where you can't coordinate anything. It's a waste of time, really. Oh, President, we're announcing. I, I hear you, what you are saying, Guti. We announce Guti what he will not do, but he didn't speak on what he will do. What do you think now that we do, we're going to be having that Minister of Electricity, no, no, the no. President? What do you think that he should be doing? No, he shouldn't be, there shouldn't be that minister in the first place to do what? Instead, they should be moving as Commander Energy, for example, if they feel that public enterprises have far many two SOEs to be able to manage. It would make better sense to have as Commander Energy and have a fit and competent minister to be able to run the entity and make sure that they oversee the work. Why do we now create a new position in order to try and 
and address the short the shortfalls and the limitations that exist currently. I mean, it's duplication of responsibility. It's just creating a big bureaucracy without attending to the to the problem. Because it that was Mr. Ngabayom Zinkwakwa of the United Democratic Movement. And now with me is the Minister of Justice, Mr. Ronald Lamula. Good evening, Minister, and how are you? Good evening. I'm very well, yes, sir. I'm good, thank you. Minister, you sat down, you listened to the President speaking. What did you make of, uh, what did you make of his speech? I think it's bold and it's decisive in terms of the energy crisis, in terms of crime and corruption and uh, also in terms of gender-based violence. is something that um, society is expecting in terms of how we're going to respond to this uh, ongoing rolling blackout, gender-based violence, and crime in general. The, mini uh, the president also made mention of the Minister of Electricity that will be located within the presidency. I had just spoken to uh, Mr. Nkwanko who indicated that the president outlined what the minister will not do but did not outline what the minister will do. What do you make of that? Um, it is um, still the prerogative of the president. When he makes the announcement, he will definitely give the details. What will that minister do? And um, the issues of coordination has been proven to be very central and important for us to respond to this challenge. We need to coordinate all sectors of the state and government, but also of um, society out there. So I think there is um, that outline that will come as and when he makes the announcement. Minister Labola, thank you very much for talking to Parliament TV and all the best wishes for the year. Sure, sure. Thank you. Well, viewers, that was Minister Ronald Lamola, the Minister of Justice. And as I have indicated earlier, we will be taking more reactions from from the members of parliament and from all those that had been sitting inside that city while listening to the president speak. Good evening, sir. The president has spoken. The president has outlined the government's priorities for the year ahead. What did you make of the president's speech? Well, I think the president's speech was uh, on point in terms of the issues which are worrying South Africans. We all know that uh, top of South Africans' irritation currently uh, not just an irritation, but you know, an issue of serious concern disrupting their lives, their livelihoods, is the issue of uh, security of electricity, um, uh, issue of unemployment, the issue of crime. Um, I can also mention that from the, from the responsibility I have, which is the health sector, we are also deeply worried, uh, deeply affected. Our ability to provide services is highly disrupted. Uh, which, which shows that all life, I mean, all aspects of life, are really disrupted by the, you know, the insecurity of electricity. So we're very pleased that there's going to be a very focused attention, because just taking from our sector, you know, it's not just a disruption; it's a drain on our resources, uh, very scarce resources which were supposed to be used to upgrade, you know, equipment and uh, maintenance. It's, for instance, going towards buying diesel, running generators. So we're very happy that there's going to be a very focused attention to this matter, including under the state of disaster, considering more hospitals to be exempted from load shedding. So we are quite pleased with that focus. Whilst uh, there's, uh, the announcement of, on, on the state of disaster was made today, what contingency plan did you have in place in the sector to deal with load shedding? Well, Top of our, our, our focus has been to um, request exemption. We have done that with a number of hospitals from ESCOM, but also through um, areas where the electricity is supplied by municipalities and metros and districts. So top of our focus has been to exempt health facilities so that when there is load shedding, they are separated from the rest of the areas. Secondly, also we have to make sure that all hospitals, have their backup power supply is in good shape so that in the, any time when there is an interruption, services will not be disrupted. But going forward, we've also been focusing on going forward to build up more capacity for self-sufficiency, including in terms of solar and other sources of of, of electricity, which will be able to keep our facilities safe. Thank you very much, Minister, and all the best for the year in your portfolio. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, that was the reaction from the Minister of Health. We will now, for a few seconds, just go back into the studio. Well, that was uh, Tembin Kosi getting more reactions outside the Cape Town City Hall, where the President just concluded delivering his 2023 State of the Nation address um, to a joint sitting of the National Council of Provinces as well as the National Assembly. Just to recap, um, the President reiterated again that um, he's not announcing new priorities in relation to government's program of action for um, in the year ahead, he only announced um, four priorities. And number one, um, which is actually at the top of the agenda for government, and of course it's a burning issue for all South Africans, business um, um, and across the board, all sectors included, it's the issue of load shedding. Uh, the second issue that the President um, addressed in his uh, State of the Nation address is the high levels, um, a response to the high levels of unemployment and particularly as it affects young people in the country. Um, course in women as well and the third issue that he committed to address um, uh, committed government to to address uh, through his program of action in the year ahead is of course the issue of poverty and the rising cost of living um, and the fourth um, priority or the fourth issue um, um, that is will be the government will be seized with in the year ahead is of course the issue of crime and corruption and for those who were not aware uh, the president um, spoke to um, the, his action plans around um, addressing that first priority um, of, of, of um, and that is really the, the action plan to address the energy crisis. And under that uh, action plan, uh, the, there's four or five, in fact, there's five uh, um, action plans or interventions that the president um, spoke to and he basically gave an update as to what progress has been made in terms of implementing the action plan but he was basically just also reiterating that this is not a new plan this um, action plan to address uh, the energy crisis in South Africa was of course announced in July 2022 um, this year it will be a continuation um, as obviously we have to look at the broader context as well of the, within the broader context of the seven uh, priorities. Um, many of the commitments that the president is making or the updates, uh, the progress reports that the president is giving, it's within that broader context of the seven priorities of the uh, MTSF, the medium term strategic framework, which obviously emanates from the national development plan. Now, if we're talking to, to the, uh, the action plan, this action plan uh, uh, to address the country's energy crisis, number one, uh, in terms of the intervention, is um, a commitment to fix ESCOM's coal-fired power stations and improve the availability, the availability uh, beg your pardon, of existing supply. Uh, number two, second, to enable and to accelerate private investment in, in generation capacity, which has been obviously outlined and um, highlighted as a weakness um, as well. And then three, it's to accelerate procurement of new capacity for renewables, for gas, and for battery storage. And number four, to unleash uh, businesses and households to invest in rooftop solar. And five, fund is to importantly fundamentally transform the electricity sector to achieve long-term energy security. Those are the five um, interventions um, under the action plan to address the energy crisis. We are now crossing over to Tembi Nkosi, who is still getting more reactions for us um, from those who were in the city hall uh, to listen to the President's State of the Nation address. Tembi Nkosi, we're crossing over to you. Thank you, Sibulelo. I am now standing with the minister in the presidency, Mr. Mwanzi Kongubele, Patrice Kosika Kulufaru Tata, the interview with Parliament TV. Utleli, Wamamelu Mungameli, Ngabazi Ndono, Nuzi Paka, Mr. Tetong Mungameli, Nam Sanji. In Tetong Mungameli, Iye Yande, Yacheba, Iz Kande Zonke, Inkalo, Ezbalegle, Inkalo, Zengele, Yogobas, Kubenjani, Ekwa Kedi, Mr. Bins. In Carlo, as in England, Baku Kujan Jani, Uguluan and Lala. In Carlo, as in England, Ugulua, Ugu Tachas or Mama, Zonke as on Carlo, Ebena Tazinje in Lalo, Ebe Kela, Nemizam as a Wenzua, who see you a pambi. Quemisabin, Sukubenjani, Indoni, Umgom, Olandelio, Go Mama's Kubenjani. 
into onum komola ndela ukungesho yolutsha siqhube njani into onum komola ndela ugxileka khuluke kumba wembane eh ebonisa zonke inkalo nezicwangciso zokuqinisekisa ukuba lengxaki siyayigwema okanye sigqitha ngapha kwayo utheke ukuqinisekisa into bana lomcimbi ukuqwalasele wayenxoxoyini wabeka umphathiswa eqinisekisa into bana ulawulo lengxaki alenzwa ngomabhala nekuphela kunegunya lopolitiko gama nema gama xa inikhomle ibiphethwe zibureaucrats kuphela ibichonge meke kwi politicians ezidiqu kwezinyindawo ngoku xa esithi lengxaki iza kuqolaselwa technically futhi kube nomphathiswa oyiqolasele engumphathiswa enamandlo politiko kutsho ukuthi ke ngoku lengxaki ikhuselekile ngokuqolaselwa futhi nangoqinisekile ukuba izigqibo ekufuneka zithathiwe ziyathathwa ngoba bonke abantu abafana bobaba thathe zozigqibo balapho Ikabali longo uti kubandu base ngobo baga sali timbe nubale inga gyombane iza usombu ululeka unge kutala. Mabate mbaba nubelo mzansi. Sinyanga eskula na apa kwe kutala slimele. Sinete mba lukba ingambu sinoku sifumana. Inde balegle bangoba ni abongi, nabongi kazi. Aba za uznikeze lezo ingambu. Pati usa kubulela kufuru tetanasi. Lawa kwa ibingu mpati iswa kwa ofisi ka monga meli u Mr. Monji Kungubele. Ontro na yongo ku is Mr. Kronewald of the Freedom Front Plus. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for taking this interview with Parliament TV. The president has spoken. You've sat down. You've listened to him. What did you make of his speech? Good evening. Well, firstly, it is as I predicted this morning that we're not going to hear anything new. It's only going to be promises, promises, and it appears... As the president, actually, what they did, they took the last six uh, of the nation addresses, cut and paste, put them together, and presented as if it is something new. Let's take, for instance, the most biggest crisis in South Africa, namely electricity and ESCO. He himself admitted there's no new plan. The plan is the same as he submitted in July last year. He said it himself. But the crisis worsened. We have more load shedding under that plan. So it is clear they don't know how to solve the energy crisis. Now he comes forward with another minister of electricity. What is a third minister going to do? We have a minister for state-owned enterprises. We have a minister for energy. Now a minister for electricity. He or she will really have to spark to make a difference. And I can't see that there will be a difference. Mr. Kronewald, thank you very much for talking to Parliament TV. Welcome. Thank you. Loho kaibingu tata upita Kronewald, we FF Plus. For now, we're just going to go back to the studio for a few minutes before we bring you more reactions from in front of the Cape Town City Hall. Of course, there was tempting course in getting more reactions uh, from the leaders of political parties as well as ministers uh, who are just giving their reactions in relation to the, the announcements that are made by the president for the year ahead. And, of course, these announcements, uh, this is uh, what will be the priorities over and above the ongoing work that is being done by government in relation to ensuring that um, the priorities as set out in the seven priorities as announced um, in 2019, that those things are actually, those uh, policy priorities are actually implemented. But for the year ahead, um, these new, these are not actually new priorities. It is ongoing work as reiterated by the president, but at the top of the list in terms of all of the reactions that we have received thus far is the issue. Um, it's the energy crisis in the country. And of course, um, a number of, of, of the political parties are saying that they don't feel that the issue, uh, the issue of, of uh, bringing in a ministry, okay. Uh, Tembi, you've got somebody with you. Let's quickly cross over to you. Tembi Nkosi, we're crossing yeah, over to you speech. for more reactions. Except that he is going to have a minister of electricity and also he declared the state of disaster. And both of them do not make sense because then there's a problem with the energy. Now we must have the Minister of Electricity. When we have a problem with Prasa, in fact, we already do. 
are we expecting next year for him to declare the Minister of Trains? There is corruption in all the municipalities around the country. Is he going to elect the Minister of Municipalities? What, what is going on? Now, what is the state of teacher? We, we reject the state of disaster. It is an opportunity for them to loot, to loot the state funds as they've done with COVID funds. And, and, and you can't declare a state of disaster because one department has a problem. What if there's a problem with Denel? What if there's a problem with another one, with SAA? Are we going to declare another state of disaster? It will never make sense. So, and, and also, it was also disturbing that the president did not want to mention Syria by its name because he, he feared his friends and handlers from the Western powers. He decided to, to mention Turkey when the disaster struck both countries in, and it is worse with Syria, but he could not mention that name because the Western powers don't like Syria and they have imposed unfair sanctions. Thank you very much. All right, uh, viewers, that was Mr. Mzwanele Nyonso, the president of the Pan-Africanist uh, uh, Congress. And I do have now with me the chief whip of the Inkata Freedom Party, Ms. Zandele Matrose. Safe to say that Ms. Matrose is the deputy chief whip of the Inkata Freedom Party. Ms. Matrose, thank you very much for taking this interview. You sat down, you listened to the president. What did you make of the speech? Um... It didn't give much hope, as the president had said, that uh, we are a country of hope. And uh, I didn't hear the time frames and the timelines in terms of um, uh, the pandemic, that um, um, the crisis that we have as a country of energy and electricity. And um, not sure about having an additional minister of electricity if it's going to solve our problems because the problem of ESCOM is not the problem of um, not having management, but it's mismanagement that is happening inside the ESCOM. So once the government cannot or the president cannot then be decisive about the, the management of ESCOM, then it becomes a problem. Um, I was happy to hear that there will be a recruitment of 12,000 police officers. Um, hopefully the transparency and also people will be able to get an opportunity to get in into the police and also uh, be trained properly to 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 have that uh, uh, to 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 be those uh, police officers also with the issue of uh, higher education as i spoke about it earlier on so i was um uh, uh, happy that the president touched on that as well and making sure that um, uh, students will be able to gain also um, uh, funds in terms of uh, the NSFAS. so yeah um let's see in the next six months if there is hope within the SONA statement. Let's see in the, in the next six months. Thank you very much, Ms. Matron, for talking to us, and good luck. Well, that was Ms. Zandile Matrosi from the, the Deputy Chief Whip of the Inkata Freedom Party, and she would have been the last person to give us reaction at Parliament TV. My name is Tembingo Silo Longoma, and I am standing in front of Cape Town City Hall, and to me, from my side, it is a good night, and I will be taking you back to the studio. Thank you, Tembi Nkosi. Tembi Nkosi has been getting reactions um, from members of Parliament, both, um, in fact, um, he's actually gotten quite a few ministers as well, and at the top of those reactions, in terms of what they're responding to or what they are reacting to, it's, it's the energy crisis and what um, uh, uh, the president is speaking to in terms of what the action plan is supposed to be in terms of addressing the issue of the energy crisis. And, of course, uh, the uh, process around uh, resolving the energy crisis or the, the action plan itself really has five priorities and those five priorities have, as I've listed them earlier but uh, another key issue that, that members are talking to in terms of the reactions is um, this new this announcement that the president will be appointing a minister uh, for, for electricity, uh, a minister to address the issue of electricity. So 
there's also a view that um, they don't see how that can actually address um, the, the, the existing challenges that we have with that, and, and they don't see how bringing in an additional minister will solve the problems. But of course, uh, the president did not, that's not the only announcement that was made. The president was talking, uh, was giving us feedback as well in terms of what has been implemented um, in terms of that energy, energy action plan, which was announced in July of 2022. Uh, let's quickly go back to Tembin Kosi. He's got more reactions for us. Over to you, Tembin Kosi. It seems like viewers, I got, I said my goodbyes quite early. We are not done yet. We are continuing with the reactions. And with me is Imam Sheikh, a member of the National Freedom Party. Good evening, sir. You have sat down, you have listened to the president, he has outlined government priorities for the financial year. What did you make of the president's speech? Good, good evening to you and good evening to all the viewers. Well, to a very large extent as the NFP, we believe that this was a repeat of 2022. As far as the energy crisis is concerned, we are now convinced that government does not have a comprehensive plan in place. Uh, that's the first thing. On the issue of crime and gender-based violence that the president addressed, we think he's missing the point. We think that you need to get to the root causes of why is there so much of violence in the society. If you look at the violence that's erupting at schools alone, will tell you where these, these uh, criminal activities are going to lead to. So we think he's out of touch with the reality as far as that is good. He talks about infrastructure development. And if you remember that South Africa has been borrowing a lot of money internationally for infrastructure development but when it comes to implementing these projects we fail dismally and again and again it's exactly the same situation he talks about engineers through the engineering council which we are going to now get. let's look at the quality of education one in two learners who start school in grade one do not finish grade 12. number two 60% of them that go to these Tivert colleges, and he's talking about now funding 30,000 of them, 60% drop out in the first year. The emphasis on education in the country is on quantity, not on quality. The 80% he talks about is not a true reflection of what we are producing. So we are not producing the engineers in this country that ESCOM needs. It's a similar problem that we had initially, if you remember, that we gave packages to those experienced and skilled people. We brought in these trainees. We did not transfer the skills, and that's one of the reasons why ESCOM is made. ESCOM's problem is, is, is a host of them. You did not build new uh, power station. Knowing it's a, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. No, your population is increasing. Your demand is going to increase. You knew you had to maintain these things. You knew that you have to maintain and keep your skills. You've got sabotage, which seems to be a serious problem. You know, you've got theft. You've got vandalism. So ESCOM's problem, the national state of disaster that is now being declared, for us, all it is going to do is going to bypass the procurement processes. And remember what happened during COVID, how they bypassed the system and all the looting and corruption took place. It's creating a conducive environment for that right now. Sheikh Imam, thank you very much for talking to Parliament TV. That was Mr. Sheikh Imam of the National Freedom Party. And with me now is the Chief Whip of the Democratic Alliance, Ms. Sivira Kwarube. Good evening. Thank you for talking to Parliament TV. You've listened to the President outlining government's priorities for the year. What did you make of the speech? Look, I think firstly it would be amiss of me to maybe not indicate that the scenes that we saw in Parliament today are absolutely shocking and they should be condemned in the harshest possible terms. In a constitutional democracy we should never see special task forces charging into Parliament, um, essentially armed people charging into a separate arm of state. And and what the EFF did today was really, it really crossed the line. And uh, it crossed the line from just being disruptive. But really, it, it, it really was something that was a challenge to our constitutional democracy. But in, fer in, in as far as the president's uh, priorities are aligned, of course what we're looking for from the president are, it, are his priorities around particularly how do we deal with the energy crisis. As we've said, the energy crisis is deeply pervasive. We are looking at not only just uh, just keeping the lights on, but you know businesses are closing down because of it. Uh, more and more people are joining unemployment queues. And all of these things have a ripple effect.
and uh, we were deeply disappointed by the announcement of a very generalized state of disaster. Our view is that uh, there should be more of a targeted approach in dealing with ESCOM and not a, just a general state of disaster because, of, because again, you'll remember that South Africa has PTSD about a state of disaster where during the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw a looting frenzy where people had subverted procurement processes and they were allowed to do so because of the special dispensation of the state of disaster. And then in addition to that, Parliament has no oversight over government under a state of disaster. We are unable to be consulted on what is gazetted. For instance, the president simply announced that a government gazette is now out, and uh, this is a unilateral executive decision. And our view is that that's a slippery slope, and that's why, as you know, we are challenging the constitutionality of parts of that act. Um, what was also missing for us was the any pronouncements on, uh, on, on really shielding South Africans from the cost of living crisis because there are implementable solutions around cutting VAT for particular things, particularly things like baby food, chicken, things that are staples in South African homes and it was a, an opportune moment for the president to say, South Africans we hear your cries, we see your plight and these are the things that we're going to do to at least cushion you um, from, from the harsh realities of the cost of living. And thank you very much for taking this interview with Parliament TV and good luck for the year. Thank you so much. All right, that was uh, Ms. Sivue Kwarube, the Chief Whip of the Democratic Alliance. And for now, we'll cross to the studio. Thank you, Tembing Kosi. That was Tembing Kosi outside the Cape Town City Hall, receiving quite a number of reactions from the political parties in the National Assembly. And of course, at the top of, their, of the issues that they are raising is, of course, the issue of government's response to the energy crisis. And of course, we know that um, uh, the, the president has reiterated that he's not making any new announcements. He's just basically responding to the issues that are burning issues uh, for South Africans at the moment. Number one, it's load shedding. Number two, it's the issue of unemployment, high, high levels of unemployment. The third one is poverty and the rising cost of living. Number four, it's crime and corruption. And the president has also, as he was outlining, um, how these uh, four action plans will be implemented. He was also giving us feedback in terms of progress that has been made in implementing the commitments that he announced in his 2022 State of the Nation Address. And those priorities from his 2022 State of the Nation Address is, of course, uh, uh, the commitment for faster growth through uh, in, uh, uh, an aggressive investment drive. Um, number two was the issue of economic reforms. Uh, number three was the public employment programs and expanding infrastructure programs. Now, if we look at all of these issues that have been announced, um, all of these fall within the ambit of the seven priorities or the seven uh, overarching priorities as announced by the president in his 2019 State of the Nation Address, which was, of course, his third State of the Nation Address um, as the state president in South Africa. But there will obviously be an opportunity for us to delve deeper into these four priorities, where obviously members will be debating the State of the Nation Address next week when they took, take to the podium to critique or even come up with solutions or proposals as to what they believe um, government should be doing in this final, this critical, this final, this year that actually represents the final push towards um, concluding the sixth dispensation. With that said, I would like to thank um, the rest of the crew. I'd like to thank Ms. Sephora, uh, who has led this team um, with, uh, with such great integrity um, and leadership as well. And I'd also like to thank each and every individual who has contributed to making sure that this session becomes an, a runaway success. With that said, viewers at home, have a wonderful evening further. We will be with you again next week when we unpack further all of the insights that will be shared by political parties and, of course, members of the public as well, as well as our academics and our thought leaders. With that said, have a good evening further.
The State of the Nation Address is followed by the debate which will be held over two days on 14 and 15 February 2023 at 2 p.m. The debate on the State of the Nation Address gives political parties an opportunity to debate, comment and raise questions on matters addressed in the President's speech. Watch the debate on the State of the Nation Address live on 14 and 15 February at 2 p.m. across Parliament's platforms. For more information on the SONA debate, visit our website at www.parliament.gov.za or follow us on our social media account at Parliament of RSA. Parliament, following up on our commitments to the people, making your future work better. President Cyril Ramaphosa will conclude the debate on the State of the Nation Address with his reply on 16 February 2023 at 2 p.m. Watch the reply by the President to the State of the Nation Address debate live across Parliament's platforms. For more information on the State of the Nation Address, visit our website at www.parliament.gov.za or follow us on our social media accounts at Parliament of RSA. Parliament, following up on our commitments to the people, making your future work better. Constitution protects our society and empowers us to govern. The Protea leaves are us, the people, who freely elect our voices in Parliament. The drum calls the people of Parliament, through whom we govern together. And the sun is our country, healing our past, improving our lives, and energizing our potential. Together, our Constitution, our people, our Parliament, and our country are building our great South African nation. Parliament TV, channel 408 on DSTV.